Welcome to the third section of our course. In this section, we'll see how to work with Spring Reactor in cloud. So firstly, we'll be exploring Mono and Flux. Those are two main constructs that ships within Reactor library. Mono is an abstraction that encapsulates one or zero values, and Flux can encapsulate one, zero or more values. Then we'll be creating a Spring Cloud application with Reactive dependency. We'll understand what a Spring Cloud application Reactive is. We'll be understanding Reactive Stream Back Pressure, so very important constructs to control the speed of publishing events. And finally, we'll see how to combine streams of data with zip function. So this is a first video and we'll be exploring Mono and Flux. So we'll be understanding the relation between Mono and Flux. We'll be joining two Mono instances and finally we'll compare Flux with one element versus Mono with one element and when we should use which of those constructs. So the first test is very simple. It should create Flux with one element. So we are creating Flux from iterable and we are passing array that has one element that is equal to one. Then we are mapping that element multiplying it by 100 and it will return the flux of integer. But if you are sure that there will be only one element, you can transform it to single. So you can see that flux has a method that is called single. Let's take a look at it. So we can see that expect and emit a single item from this flux source or signal. It will throw no such element exception if the source is empty and index of bound exception for source with more than one element. So you need to be 100% sure that you can transform your flux to mono if the element that is within flux is only one. Then you can verify it using step verifier. So you are creating our flux from step verifier. We are expecting that it should have 100 element. We are expecting complete signal and verifying that. Our single block call just retrieves the actual value because mono is a container for asynchronous processing. So to get actual value, we need to block and get the value and it should be equal to 100. So let's start the test and see if it behaves as expected. So we can see that it passed. So it means that we are able to transform flux to mono if the flux is only one element. Then let's compare it with mono. So we should create mono with one element. So if you are sure that you will have only one value upfront, you can create mono at the beginning. Then you won't need to convert from flux to mono using single. So you can supply mono with just some value. So we are supplying with just one value. Then in asynchronous way, we are mapping it. And then we are verifying that it should have 100 and then signal complete that will finish execution. So we can see that the test passed. But let's compare it to one caveat a little bit different. So let's say that we have two monos. So when we are concatenating two monos, then we should get one flux. So how does it work? So we are creating mono of just one element and mono of just two elements, but both of them can carry at most one element. So there is concat with operator that concatenates two reactive containers. So we are concatenating first mono with second one. As you remember, the mono cannot hold more than one element. Because of that, when you are concatenating two monos that are carrying one item, you will get the flux as the return. So flux of integer will be returned and that flux will have two elements. So then you can map it, of course, you will map all data that is within the flux, so one and two, and then you can leverage the step verifier to expect element that is equal to 100, 200, and your expect complete signal. So let's start the test and see if that is a case. So we can see that the test passed, so it means that we are joining two monos, then we are getting one flux. So you understand how to work with mono and flux.